other than that, we're going to belt through this. There will be stops and starts as the show goes on. Try to regard that as some sort of free DVD extra that only you get to see. OK? <laughs> Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, going from that direction over to that direction, I am safe to bring people out. But, and Yeah, because you two really shouldn't be there for the length of the show, yeah? That's <laughs> People will spot that at home. Hi, yeah. How are you? Is that all right? Thanks, Carmella. Right, in that chair, has been there for the... Who the fuck are you? <laughs> is this some sort of end-of-series gift, is it? Uh... <laughs> you could have hidden him below the desk before the fucking audience arrived here. <laughs> yeah, one of the most gifted mouths we have working. Uh... <laughs> How are you? No, and doesn't even register that I'm talking about him at the moment. That's a complete professional. How are you? Plugging in the screen. Good to have you there. Who wouldn't like to be secretly flated during a television recording session <laughs> by that very man there? There he goes again! <laughs> Disappearing into his little girl. OK. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to drag out this bit, because I'm not fucking sitting down there so, uh, you know, not starting this show. I know, I know. There's a man checking the... Hurry up, Dara, please. What? What, is he by the hour? Is he very worried at that? <laughs> Maybe see the show go, my time's up, and they disappear off. Right. <laughs> To mock the week, I'm Dara Bream. The news this week. East Anglia has been rocked by a bird flu outbreak. Some of the poultry workers are so concerned about it that they've stopped having sex with the turkeys. <laughs> The bird flu scare has come as a major blow to the turkey population, just as they were congratulating each other on making it through Christmas. <laughs> In a disaster on this scale, it's all too easy to overlook the forgotten victims, the cranberry sauce manufacturers. <laughs> there are plans to make the school curriculum more appealing to teenagers by introducing lessons with greater relevance. So, computer games will be followed by happy slapping and double drugs. <laughs> It's been estimated that the 2012 Olympics will cost Britain four times as much as originally stated, rising to a massive £9 billion. So that's a good start. One world record in the bag already. <laughs> Letter bombs have been discovered at the offices of a speed camera company, a congestion charge company and the Vehicle Licensing Association. The police believe the bombs are the work of a disgruntled motorist and have narrowed down their list to suspects to everybody. <laughs> A woman astronaut besotted with her colleague was accused of trying to murder a love rival. When she was arrested, the astronaut had two bin bags, some rubber tubing and a roll of gaffer tape. NASA are still trying to work out how she stole a complete shuttle repair kit. <laughs> the male astronaut involved had only considered it a casual fling, a case of Roger and out. <laughs> Joining me tonight are six of the country's top comedy performers. Annie Parsons, Joe Caulfield, Russell Howard and Frankie Ball, Hugh Dennis and Rod Gilbert. Welcome to the show. <laughs> OK. Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of clean-up operations after the bird flu outbreak at Bernard Matthews Farm in Suffolk. But what does B-T-A-D stand for? Is it, bugger, there's a dead one? <laughs> Is it Bioterrorists Annual Desco? <laughs> Is, Is it, it BBC Terminate Ant and Deck? <laughs> <laughs> Is it best to avoid drumsticks? <laughs> well, that's, that's probably as close as we're going to get, to be honest. Blessed, it... blessed takes a dump. <laughs> Is it, is it what goes you'd into hear that, the... You'd hear that coming from miles away, oh, wouldn't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Joy! No. <laughs> and then the laugh, once he's laid the cable... <laughs> <laughs> as he moves to another camp. You'd imagine that Blessed's dump scream would bounce off the moon and crush Tokyo? <laughs> <laughs> you 
bath time arse disaster? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Again, another yes. video. I have to say, the answer I was looking for was bath time arse disaster. <laughs> I got that paper. Yeah, it was good, actually. <laughs> it was a good paper. They, they just went in a different angle with the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> the, T, the T, I'll give you a yeah. clue, stands for turkey. British turkeys are doomed! <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, turkeys are destroyed, I would yes. reckon. But what would be? Bilious? Billions? British. B British. Very ah, good. British well done. Turkey. Hugh, by a process of going through every word <laughs> beginning with B, <laughs> Hugh has correctly I identified the answer. <laughs> Let us applaud him. <laughs> the answer I was looking for was British turkeys are destroyed and refers to the arrival of the deadly H5N1 strain of avian flu in this country. Exclusion zones have been set up and a cull of 159,000 birds carried out. <laughs> Is it enough? I wonder, ladies and gentlemen. The BBC sent us a note not to scaremonger in any way. It's out there! It's out there, for God's sake! Oh, why can guns and shotgun cartridges? What the hell are you doing watching this, for Christ's sake? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're going to be doing right now. We should do Sorry, that's something wrong, John. We don't need to panic, do we? Let's we don't need to panic. Apparently, if you eat turkey, you should be absolutely fine. The only way you can catch it is if you dry out the carcass and sniff it. That's essentially it, If yes. you're into yeah. that sort of weird <laughs> shit, you deserve exactly what's coming to you. That's simply not true. I call Suffolk. Yeah. That might well kick off. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about the one place in the world where bird flu could actually raise life expectancy levels <laughs> as the locals finally stop marrying I, seagulls. But the, <laughs> the, the interesting thing about it is that they are battery turkeys. They're battery turkeys, they're treated very, very cruelly, but uh, of the infected ones, the Duracell ones lived slightly longer. <laughs> Though, and they've banned you... pigeon racing on the back of this as well. They've banned also, if panic yeah. banned pigeon, and that's going to force it underground, surely. <laughs> <laughs> it would actually be more humane if they let them live in a bargain bucket. <laughs> if they rolled into a bargain bucket as an egg, hatched, lived their life there, and then just before they died, onion rings were added. <laughs> like, with the man from Del Monte, it's just a job. You know? <laughs> He says yes, but it's more of a yeah. You can tell that Matthews is into his work. If turkeys ever take over the world, their science will be devoted to keeping Bernard Matthews alive for 10,000 years while they repeatedly skin and reskin his scrotum. <laughs> You don't I'm that. I'm sorry, no, no, no. It, it, there is the appealing image, by the way, the man, of Del, man from Del Monte sitting somewhere on a tropical veranda going, well, I really wanted to get into teaching. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this job just came up and, you know, the hat fish, so... Yeah. Come on, it's but, tinned fruit. Do they put the best fruit in tins? <laughs> they couldn't give a shit. <laughs> they could put turkey in Frankie, there. We wouldn't know. <laughs> Frankie, you've just ruined what every we... harvest festival ever now. <laughs> the tabloids did go a bit insane of it, of a disease which, which doesn't even exist. The mirror ran with the headline, uh, what? What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> do, you, do, you know, okay. do you know why? Do you know why you have a flicker? The, mo the monitor, Johnny fucking blowjob didn't quite do the job. Oh, right. Fucking sorted out! Concentrate on the job in hand, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Blowjob. That's, that's, a, that's a, like and the, the worst weirdest... thing, he's going to come out here now and he's a big <laughs> lad. <laughs> yeah. That's like the weirdest superhero ever. <laughs> yeah. I'm Johnny okay, we Blowjob. Can, so we're going to pause for a second because right. this thing is apparently. Is, yes. Johnny Blowjob. <laughs> this might oh, ban... sorry. Yeah. January, I am getting a road note on my ear going, could we not say that Bernard Matthews takes an enormous amount of glee in the culling of. You know, various things that. He doesn't take glee in it, he sits on a throne of turkey skulls. <laughs> Look at that. Just sorted it out. You just you just pulled the fucking cable out. I could have done that. <laughs> that was that. a job for Johnny Blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. It just won't work. Is it a bird? Is it, is it a fly? It's an old man is, sucking like, someone's cock. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I could actually just... There's an off switch on this. I could have done that without getting <laughs> the poor man to race over. There are I, rules I, 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 oh, you're right, I don't need the screen. You're absolutely fine. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, I will say that we are obliged not to scare Munger here, unlike the papers, which went bananas. Uh, the mirror said, we may die, save us. <laughs> and the news world ran with, human bird flu is here. <laughs> Just for clarification, human bird flu isn't here. Right? <laughs> and people in the news world were going bananas. There's no, there's no such thing. The disease hasn't, doesn't well, exist. I'm getting, I'm getting very confused by all the advice on bacteria. I read the other day that there's more bacteria in the washing up bowl than there is in your toilet. And I thought, what do you do? I panicked now to shit in the sink. <laughs> What are you supposed to do That's with the information they give you? I don't know what to do with all this information. Let's face it, Rod. In that you went with your heart rather than your head there. Didn't Possibly. You? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not my head. That's not my heart. That's my head. You know, so I'm, I'm not, yeah. I'm not you're a, a Catholic. You got it the wrong way. I'm around. not an anatomist, uh, Rod. I, I don't know. Either what these way, it'd be a terrific fairy liquid advert, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, apparently, you can't get your hands off. No, Rod. Not there. <laughs> It doesn't, make any, it doesn't make any difference how much you wash either to the amount of bacteria in your body. So I was right never to wash my cock. <laughs> in fact, I think when that did the you bacteria. That? Is that what fact, it is? I think the bacteria add an extra couple of centimetres. <laughs> For years now, we've been told you've got to have, you know, free-range chicken. It's going to completely change that. You don't want a chicken that's free-range. You want a chicken that has been locked up for a long... You know, this isn't an ordinary chicken. This is a chicken which has been raised friendless in solitary confinement. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the actual first one of H5N1 in this country was actually a swan, wasn't it? It was a swan, and yes. And it arrived in Scotland and they said, oh, well, you know, it's probably come over from France. <laughs> Nothing to do with us. That's it. Blame those foreigners. <laughs> yeah. Mad cow disease. Oh, yeah. Sod all to do with us. Probably some German cow came across on a lilo across the North Sea. <laughs> Birds have got an easy deal. Birds have got an easy deal here. They're just, they're just getting flu. I mean, cats can get AIDS. That would have made Top Cat a very different show. <laughs> My food's falling out, DC. <laughs> Officer Dibble, I've got AIDS. <laughs> no, I think what? Hang on a minute. What? Whoa. Can, I... can cats get AIDS? It's called fades. No, it's called uh, feline, uh, feline, AIDS, yeah. feline AIDS. Who's yeah. how they get AIDS? <laughs> <laughs> it's called like feeder or fade. Thank, or... thank God you don't work for the National Health Phone. I don't know, something. <laughs> See you later. Bye. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing Pro Evo on the PlayStation. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> I think calling it bird flu is one of the problems. It's difficult to take something seriously when it's got flu there. It's like bird cough or bird yeah. sneezles. Mm. You know, if it was bird plague, we'd probably take that. Bird death. <laughs> Foot and mouth and stomach and arse. <laughs> we'd be worried about that, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> it is exactly a lot more serious. Saying. It is a lot more serious than flu. It should be called avian shit your organs out. <laughs> The statistics, really, because that's, that's why you're not in charge, frankly. <laughs> Quick question, sir. Bernard Matthews and his farm has been in the yeah. news before. Uh, do we remember the stories that it was in the news for? Twizzlers. It was Twizzlers as one thing, yes. They, uh, Jamie they... Oliver slagged off Twizzlers. And, and they invent turkey Twizzlers. What else? Do you remember what else? Oh, they played uh, t uh, baseball with turkey. Oh, yeah, they turkey baseball. baseball with turkey. Yeah. <laughs> but I was bad Which is bad for a, a turkey's self-image. It's not a sport that suits them. Exactly. Yeah. They can't, they can't they, hold the bat. They, they can't field. If they'd mix the teams up even, like half human, half turkey, it, it then you get a thing. Do you think they got confused between the words base and based? <laughs> I, 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 to be honest, with the turkeys, I think they got confused between the word baseball and piñata, is how they got confused. <laughs> What's piñata? Piñata is when you thump the shit out of a donkey on, on a rope. It's a Mexican thing. It's not an Irish thing. thing. It's not an Irish thing, no. <laughs> it couldn't be less of an Irish thing, piñata. Yeah. What, what? Well, hello. Welcome to Ireland. <laughs> uh, it's it's a pleasure to have yeah. you here at the Shaughnessy just... Farm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dara, you... That's cheeky. Yeah. You're just doing it in a Mexican accent. I'm... Yes, I, could, uh, I could just as easily say there's nothing more Irish than piñata. Welcome now, here we are, just about to beat the shit of everyone that, See, that's, a, that's an that, Irish game now. That offends me. It is if okay, you do uh, <laughs> That kind of cheap, excuse me, national stereotyping you're doing there just is wrong. No. And so do my cousins. Uh, sorry. <laughs> If this happens, and it's brought into the healthcare system in general, do you think Britain's healthcare system will be able to cope with, you know, a mass outbreak no. of...? Yeah, it almost certainly not. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> we struggle with everything, haven't we? Everything we've ever had. You may have heard now that they've got this new worry about mad sheep disease. As a follow-on from mad cow disease, the government have been doing research on sheep's brains for five years. Turned out recently that, in fact, they've been doing the research on cows' brains by mistake, and the research was worth jack shit. You'd have thought... <laughs> You'd have thought they might have spotted this, you know. Oh, have you got the sheep's brain? Yes. 
<laughs> Mind you, it was a big sheep. <laughs> black and white, went moo a lot. <laughs> That's how mad it is. Lucky we got <laughs> <have> the <laughs> Who is that? Who's going to step in and, and save the health service then? Richard Branson. Yes, that's it. Yes. With uh, Virgin Surgeries. He's moving into health on the basis that if you run a coach and a train company, you're going to understand waiting lists. Yes. <laughs> How can you trust anything that Richard Branson does? Mm. What sort of arsehole tries to fly around the world in a balloon when he owns a bloody airline? <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's going to be exactly like Virgin Trains. They'll go, oh, you can't see the doctor, but we do have a replacement coach driver if you'd like to speak to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a, he's You've got got a thing now where people can pay a million dollars to travel into space with him. I'd pay three grand just not to be stuck in a lift with the arse. <laughs> <laughs> he's also got I, I, don't know, I don't think it's with him, it's with his company. No, I don't he's think... going up as well. I, yeah. On every flight. Yeah. 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 Well, Stephen Hawking <laughs> has agreed to be on it. Or maybe Branson just turned his volume down. <laughs> you want to go, don't you? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Branson, like Branson treated Stephen Hawking like a ventriloquist dog, did he? <laughs> I want to go on the plane! I want to go on the plane! <laughs> Don't put me back in the box! Don't put me back in the box! Uh... It's amazing, isn't it, what they can do with medicine these days? It's like that woman last week who gave birth to a... She was 67 years old. And you're thinking, you don't really want to be a kid there struggling to walk, finding out that your parents are in exactly the same yeah. condition. <laughs> it's not going to be a struggle pushing it out at 67, though, isn't it? That baby's... <laughs> He's going to have spent the last three months bungee jumping. <laughs> At the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, the winners are Frankie, Hugh and Raj. <laughs> now we play a round called Wheel of News 2, Wheel Harder. This game <laughs> involves Rod, Andy, Frankie and Joe. So you can make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge. Our random news generator contains a bank of topics. We spin the wheel, a topic will come up, and they'll have to step forward and make jokes about it. And the winning team will be the one with the best material. OK, the first topic, let's spin the wheel. First topic is climate change. Who wants to step forward on that? I'll sort out climate it's change. Rod. <laughs> I'll sort out climate change, Dara. People, I... Is that climate change? <laughs> that, was, that was Lake District about a week ago. Uh, <laughs> People are going on about climate change as if it's the end of the world. I, I'm Welsh. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> I couldn't give a... That's what I want. That's what I want. Our climate is shit house. I can't wait for it to change. Like people are, you've got no idea how tough it is living here. I was eight before I realised I could take a cagoule off. How about that? In the Bible, God made it rain for 40 days and 40 nights. That's still the best summer I remember. <laughs> bring it on, I say, bring it on. Rod Gilbert! <laughs> Let's spin the wheel again. The subject is alternative therapies. Who wants to come in on that? I will. Joe. There's been a survey published about alternative therapies, basically put together by uh, a lot of mad people pretending to be doctors. And uh, <laughs> they've come up with things that were healthy choices for us, like next week on Valentine's Day, instead of chocolates, they've suggested that you should buy a gift voucher for a colonic irrigation treatment. Because <laughs> hmm. nothing says, I love you, like a hose up your backside. There we go. Which leaves us with Andy and Frankie. The next topic is... It's terrorism. <laughs> Andy's in like a shot. Now, Tony Blair has once again tried to justify improving our nuclear weapons cos he says one of the reasons is he's worried terrorists such as Osama bin Laden might get hold of them. Now, once again, I think this is scaremongering. We know Osama bin Laden hasn't got a nuclear weapon cos we haven't seen it on his videos. <laughs> we know he's got a rifle... <laughs> ..and a donkey. <laughs> I don't think we've got to worry until he's ditched the rifle and we see his donkey strapped with a cruise missile. <laughs> well done, Andy Parsons! <laughs> yeah. Let's see what Frankie's been left with. <clears throat> 
at crime. <laughs> <laughs> crime looking a lot like bird flu there, but... <laughs> Yeah, they're going to bring in super as boys. Now, I mean, as boys already sounds too cool. Teenagers see it as a badge of honour. They should call them gay boys or bender badges. <laughs> I tell you, the, the TV show I'd love to see, CSI Glasgow. <laughs> well, they've done some preliminary tests and it looks like the intruder definitely did a jobby on the carpet. <laughs> We're looking for a young man with a poor diet because the job he's got a wham bar with an old 50 pence stuck in it. <laughs> we got this thing on uh, DVDs now where they say DVD piracy funds the drugs trade. Funds the drugs trade. I don't know about you, but I reckon if you can't make money out of heroin, <laughs> you're going to struggle in general. <laughs> The problem with this crack cocaine is people can just take it or leave it. Thank God we're still selling the Harry Potters. <laughs> crack cocaine, of course, a combination of cocaine and baking soda. How many combinations do you think the junkies went through before they came up with that? <laughs> Round my way, they were using heroin and crunching up cornflakes. <laughs> but everyone kept overdosing when they went for a second bowl. <laughs> Craggy Royal. Your point in that round go to Frankie and Raj. <laughs> this round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question on the Board of Six Categories? Joe, which one would you like? Home News, please. OK, your category is Home News. The answer is 10 minutes. What is the question? Uh, 10 minutes. Is that sobering up time for a budget airline pilot? <laughs> Is it how much of 2006 can Pete Doherty remember? Yeah. <laughs> is it, is how it, long the, does is it if the Pope had a wank, how long would he ejaculate for? <laughs> yeah. is it, I know. Is it how long does it take Stephen Hawking to descend Ben Nevis? <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, you just hear eject. <laughs> 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 Is it? Is it? It would take me 20 years to get tired of shagging Natalie Portman. How quickly did I tire of shagging my current girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is be, it on a, how on a long different your local. current girlfriend said you last? <laughs> I would say. Is she it? doesn't have a TV, I'm <laughs> safe. <laughs> <laughs> You don't realise that's quite flattering, Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ten minutes. Not for me. Yeah. I've got... Uh, I was going to ask him for his secret. No, I've got retarded ejaculation, which is a horrific thing. <laughs> so, is it, let me check, let me check. Like, how retarded? Are we in danger of, of enjoying your Saturday night at any stage now, are we? Uh, <laughs> enjoying my Saturday night? My Saturday week. night is spent climbing into a chicken coop and sniffing the goodness. <laughs> I'm just wondering how retired it could it be. So then you go, oh, there we go. Uh, no, 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 it means, it, it's a horrible thing, but it means if you last longer, for some reason, it's called retarded ejaculation. I found are you it. seriously presenting this as a problem? Well, yeah, no. all right, all right, all right, all right. I know we're not going to block this fucking thing. Mine's too big. Leave, 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 leave. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> most <laughs> retards suffer from premature ejaculation, <laughs> in my experience. It's ironic, isn't it? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Can somebody give us... It? Oh, oh, shut up, the fucking lot of you, right? Uh, Jesus, wept, all right? Is okay. it? Calm is... the fuck down, all right? <laughs> I'm going to talk to you Joe. in the hope that when you yeah. open this mouth, it has nothing is... to do with no. ejaculation. It does. That's all I'm going to ask. Is it? I will merely set up the question again, Hugh, to give you a fair run at it. The answer okay. is 10 minutes. What is the question? Well, not 10 minutes, but is it what, <laughs> the what was the follow-up to the seven dwarves? <laughs> <laughs> The or ten minute, see? Minute. That's a nice one. But you're is all in 50 joke mode now. Is it, is it, is it, how, long is it how long does it take a one-eyed woman with a big nose to realise you've sat next to her on a bus? <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> Andy. Is that, a, is that a no, Dara? It's a no. It's a no, but it's nice, but it's a no. Is it how long was the recent run of my off-Broadway musical <laughs> based on the Challenger space shuttle disaster? <laughs> what was the question again? The, the question, question was... was <laughs> well, no, I don't tell you what the fucking question is. That's a fucking round. No, the question uh, was... So. Is it, what is the life expectancy of an Iraqi greengrocer? <laughs> What's the maximum length of time a man can tread water once he's been handed a hippo? <laughs> 
Is that another no, Doris? <laughs> no, I'm wrong. I can't do this game. What kind, <laughs> what kind of, like, you know, swimming lessons were you brought to? Yeah, you're doing good, you're doing very good. Now, bring in the hippo, bring in the hippo. <laughs> <laughs> And hang on a minute, why did they cut you out of the BBC ident? <laughs> you talking to me? Yes. <laughs> I've got a lazy eye. I know. Funny, <laughs> really funny, you dickhead. <laughs> no, no wonder the Russell. fucking hippo hated Russell. you. Russell, hey, oh, the hippo it? didn't hate me. He was angry to me. He didn't. There's nothing to do with. There's no relationship there. Sure, the hippo. That wasn't it. a joke about your lazy eye. It was. I genuinely was confused by it. I meant the, Russell, Russell, the hippo. We've Russell. all had a drink. Whoa! <laughs> Russell's not at all worried because he's just question? come, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> That's next Friday's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you the answer. Uh, what, can I have another crack? Go on. Yeah, one more crack and then let's steer vaguely towards the topic. Go on. Is it something to do with education? <laughs> is it what do most kids think quarter of an hour is? <laughs> oh, no, the it, it, it is something to do vaguely with education. Oh, it's, it? it's how long are new lessons going to be? How long are some new lessons? Yeah, Mandarin specifically. Sure. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Very well, well done, Russell Howard. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. The question I was looking for is how long might some lessons now last under proposed secondary school reforms? These are the radical proposals from the Qualifications and Curriculum Authority to combat pupil disaffection by revolutionising school timetables and teaching methods. Does anyone really care about pupil disaffection? Well, you know, is there any no, generation that didn't have no. to like this? Do you uh, know, at school, at school you, uh, I mean, working towards excellence does depend on the pupils, but we had a, uh, you know, we had a bloke at my school who, when they marked A-levels, you used to get A, B, C, D, E, O, F. Those were the grades, right? The first time, he took his A-levels twice. The first time round... How did round, he get an O before the F? Well, because it was an O-level pass and then a fail. So you but the first time round, he got two O's and an F. He retook them, he got two F's and an O, <laughs> and he was delighted because he could spell ooh F off <laughs> with his A level result. But it's amazing, See, that's, that's the kind all... of kids you're working with. But that's yeah. all you do at school. We, used to, we had a maths teacher called Mr. Winter, and he had a comb over, right? And we used to play a game called Tilt the Wig. And the, the, aim, the aim was to get him so angry that his hair would flap down by the side. <laughs> and you cannot get told off by a grown man whose hair is flapping to. <laughs> It's the most fun. It's like when you go 10 pin bowling with your mates and they go and get a drink and you fiddle with their name. They come back, they bowl, they get a strike, they turn to celebrate, and above them in flashing letters it just says, I touch kids. <laughs> it's that, <laughs> that level of giddy joy, you yeah? know? <laughs> totally oblivious to the fact that. Right? This is part of the new proposals, isn't it, that they have things like ten-minute classes to shake up education <laughs> and they have uh, the combined subjects and stuff like that. It is, genu it is genuinely a proposal that you would get different teachers yeah. to add it. And the one suggested by the man from the Qualifications and Curriculum Advisory Board, whatever it is, uh, was that perhaps the PE teacher could come around and tell you about great historical example of sporting figures and their leadership. Which is could there be a, a worse idea? Could, I mean, you're sitting there as a history teacher teacher trying to tell people about life in the trenches in the First World War, a guy comes in in a tracksuit yeah. and starts going on about the life of Graham Souness. <laughs> I think they combine religious education and biology, so then you'll know uh, where babies come from, but you'll also know it's a sin and dirty and bad. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other suggestion was... <laughs> that would be a terrific One of the <laughs> examples was anatomy, where you could have your science teacher and your PE teacher giving the lesson together. The danger then, isn't it, if you forget your Bunsen burner, you know, you may have to do the whole lesson in your pants. <laughs> The whole scheme seems to be, what else can we get the PE teacher to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are they not also introducing new... They're trying to introduce new things, like you can do archery and skateboarding, apparently, in school. <laughs> and what's yeah. going to happen there is you're just going to get a whole new type of drive-by shooting. <laughs> 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 Mothers of gang members <laughs> pleading for quivers to be taken off the streets. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, you'll be, but you surely be able to hear the roll, pat, roll, pat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my God, quick, yeah. duck, yeah. everything. <laughs> <laughs> there was the example given actually of, the, of, the, of many of the new sports, and they, they suggested uh, skateboarding and golf. As if there's, yeah. you know, in a Venn diagram, just to bring maths into this, a Venn diagram <laughs> that includes kids who skateboard and kids who play golf. There was no intersection there at all. <laughs> I was thinking you were saying it was skateboarding while golfing. No, no, like, no. Like, no. that's, sort of, that's okay. brilliant. That's like sort of council house polo. That's a fantastic <laughs> idea, isn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> was about... All these new sports are because Blair, Blair thinks our kids are too fat. Uh, isn't it? That way they, they eat too much sugar and too much salt and too much fat and stuff. And, and I read a really frightening thing the other day, that if you leave a fat kid in a glass of Coke overnight... <laughs> You can finish that one off yourself. Too. <laughs> well, their, their proposal for fat kids at school is that they give them dance lessons. They're not going to have the concentration for that, are they? Everybody do the mashed potato. Ooh, mashed potato! <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, if they're saying, oh, well, how do, how do we get children to learn? Make them. Yes. Make them learn. <laughs> Combine algebra with a beating. <laughs> you know. A lot of the new subject is just designed to make parents feel even more stupid, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's like, great, you know, can you help me with my Mandarin homework? Oh, yes, dear. It's like a small orange, a bit like a satsuma. <laughs> <laughs> People were saying, oh, well, it's stupid, you know, what's the point of any of our kids learning Arabic? But it could be quite useful, couldn't it? For instance, if you were sat on the tube and two people in front of you were speaking Arabic, it would make you a little more relaxed about what they had in their bag. <laughs> <laughs> or, or not. It'd be good if it was Arabic phrases that you could really use when you're travelling in the Middle East. Help, my legs have been blown off. Could you phone an ambulance? <laughs> That's a very sharp sword. Why are you videotaping this? <laughs> Where's the nearest marketplace? Good, I'll head in the opposite direction. <laughs> but surely all this talk about learning all these sort of slightly more obscure foreign languages, surely what we really want our kids to learn, most importantly, is English. And then, as the first foreign Speak language... For yourself. What, did, did somebody argue with that? No, somebody went, <laughs> bravo! Which is fantastic. <laughs> Somebody, one word. person. Let's start a rally. <laughs> Here we go. I think we're saying that um, Chinese was an obscure foreign language. That's Do you know how many Chinese people there are? <laughs> one point one, one, one billion. <laughs> But they're not talking, is that what you think? Yeah. Yeah. I think it would great. be quite impressive if you pitched up in, like, the middle of uh, Beijing and went, yes, it's here. Well, yours is a basically a minority interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. That wasn't my point at all. I, I said some was obscure. I didn't say Mandarin was an obscure one. I said some. My point was, I think the first language you should learn is English and the second language you learn is English and then, <laughs> maybe, learning it twice, some of it will filter in. <laughs> Well, you great. can talk all you like, Parsons, when the, <laughs> when the Chinese invade, you'll be crucified upside down with a roast duck stuck up your arse. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, these education proposals, mm. you know, they've been upsetting teachers. And you don't want to upset a teacher, do you? Very easy to upset a teacher. All you've got to do to upset a teacher <laughs> is go, Ooh, you've got long holidays. <laughs> they don't like that, do they? <laughs> and then, if you've... Continue with that with, oh, and you finish at 3.30. <laughs> oh, they're livid, aren't they? Oh, I've got me marking. <laughs> and primary school teachers, they don't like it. If you go to a primary school teacher, and how old are they? You teach seven-year-olds. <laughs> That's all right. You don't have to know anything, do you? <laughs> well, you can tie your own shoelaces. They think you're a genius. <laughs> Primary teaching isn't a job. What, you're teaching little kids to do paintings out of seashells and glitter? That's what they'd have done if you weren't even in the room. <laughs> <laughs> They've been teaching six-year-olds philosophy in Scotland, haven't they? Did you see this? Yes, yeah. there, is a, there is a borough in Scotland that, that have, has put Socratic uh, dialogues, all the philosophical, the major philosophical questions, on the curriculum for That's primary school good. children. You don't want to be... When you're, sort, when you're, like, six, you want to just be farting under your arm, you know, <laughs> blowing bubbles in milkshake, just going, ah. <laughs> Do you want to do a potato yeah. print? I might not even exist. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Russell, Joe and Andy! <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way to the performance area, please. I'll call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. The first subject is unlikely things to hear on Comic Relief. And we'd just like to thank the donation of 160,000 turkeys from a <laughs> Mr B. Matthews. <laughs> Remember, tonight isn't all about comedy. Here's Ben Elton. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, we're also supporting projects in the UK. For example, this is my extension. <laughs> my name's Ade, I'm seven years old, and I have to walk five miles every day to get fresh water, so I really don't have time to play footballs with fat celebrities. Fuck off and give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Why don't they just eat the flies? <laughs> right, here's one for you. Three Ethiopians walk into a bar. <laughs> If we remove all these villagers' cataracts, one day they might be able to make our shoes. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it either. Some of those kids are fatter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, 20% of everything you give goes directly to a grinning warlord wearing a necklace of human finger bones. <laughs> Turn off the camera, turn off the camera. How much do you want this food? <laughs> <laughs> this village had one goat until I ate it. <laughs> Later, Dawn French will be climbing into a bath of beans. Not for charity, it's her supper. <laughs> We're from the Maasai tribe. When are we going to get that money for that eye dent we did? <laughs> <laughs> OK. The next topic is the worst thing your new neighbour could say. What day do the bins go out round here? My wife's body's starting to stink. <laughs> well, looks like we got ourselves a fresh one. <laughs> So pleased to meet you. We were a bit worried you might be black. <laughs> Here, have a carrier bag full of my pubes. <laughs> Stay away from my daughter. She gave me crabs. <laughs> I hope my turkeys won't be keeping you awake. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I are nudists and have been for the past 70 years. <laughs> You're bigger than you look through the telescope. <laughs> I fantasize about tricking your wife into making love to me by wearing your skin. <laughs> Would you like to smell some chicken poo? <laughs> Welcome to the street, or as we like to call it, the cul-de-sac of Christ. <laughs> Do you like the music? <laughs> of so what the what the? <laughs> I can see you when you sleep. <laughs> yes, that's right. The uh, wife breeds rot violets, the children are in a brass band, and I'm a paedophile. <laughs> it's simple. Your dog and I are in love. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of that round are Frankie Hugh and Rod. Sit down, everyone. <laughs> that is the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Joe Corville, and Russell Howard. <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Boyle, Hugh Jazz, and Rod Gilbert. Thank you for watching. Good night. My blood sugar is fucking plummeting. I mean, that kind of... Uh, do you want a Nutri-Green bar, Dara? Oh! <laughs> oh, no, do it again so I catch it in a kind of a dramatic way. Mm, yes, Frankie, I do. Hey! Uh, <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> I was getting ratty there, but now yeah. I've got Nutrigrain. Mmm. <laughs> Nutrigrain for when you're doing quiz shows and you're feeling shit. <laughs> <laughs> this one goes out on BBC One just after the show that finishes, just as we're starting up, which is Crime Watch. Uh, which is, you know... Do this one moody. Uh, moody. Ooh, I actually am, yeah, OK. <laughs> right? Oh, Crime Watch is a bit depressing. So turn over as you take an irreverent look at the culling of 160,000 turkeys. <laughs> we'll make it funny. <laughs> over on BBC Two now. Are you about to call Crime Watch with some important information? What's the rush? Give it half an hour, turn over to BBC Two and watch Mock the Week. <laughs> Are you rolling? Don't sniff it. Yeah, okay, cool. You've mm. changed. Mm. <laughs> We're just getting ready to do another show. I'm just finishing my turkey sandwich. Delicious and so cheap. Find out why <laughs> on BBC Two now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>